we strongly support the compromise that's been developed. And yes, it hasn't been a transparent process, but finally we're at the finish line, and it's going to provide needed help. It's not a panacea for full school funding that is really needed, but it's going to help stop the bleeding in many districts, and that's a great thing. I know Senator Chamberlain will acknowledge staff in closing remarks, but in this opportunity now, I want to as well. We have an amazing nonpartisan research staff. Anne Marie Lewis has been with us 25 years, legal counsel, Jenna Hofer back here, uh, fiscal analyst, Betsy Helseth, research analyst. What an incredible dedicated team, and like so many of the others, they have not had a day off. They've been on call since we gaveled the regular session. We so much appreciate your nonpartisan dedication, super erogatory efforts. To also Cassie McGinnis, the reviser, the amendments, the changes that we're always offering. There's people with families and others parts of their life, and they're always available for us, and we so much appreciate that. To Judy Donovan, the, the committee uh, legislative assistant, all-purpose uh, professional, uh, thanks for keeping us informed uh, as needed. Thank you to Greg Marcus, the committee administrator, to researcher Ed Cook, and finally, to our researcher, Donna Elling, who has been with us as well, uh, 25 or more years with service in the House. You all, you're amazing, and we deeply appreciate all of your efforts, and to all the LAs and others that have been a part of this as well. Yes, this is a significant investment, the most in 15 years. and. It's very appropriate to acknowledge where we should give a lot of the thanks to, and that would be to Governor Tim Walls and to the House Democratic leadership. If we're talking about the resources and keeping it simple and the money and the formula that came, that was lifted up from the zero formula we had earlier, to where we can have agreement now. Because there's many parts of this that you wouldn't recognize from the earlier version. Points that we strongly pointed out when the bill was up earlier. It has dramatically improved. And we're at 554 million or so in spending. Actually, the House Democrats, the governor, after the supplemental information came out, they were at 700 million, and would have, and they provided the resources. But hey, let's you know, we'll put up 67 votes. I hope that we got this far. But remember, we were at zero, nada on the formula, and now there's 450, 60 million. We know how that target got lifted, and that needs to be acknowledged. Also, the importance of voluntary pre-K-4. 4,000 students needing some extra help and a high-quality program. The bill we passed earlier over the objection of the Senate Democrats had nothing for voluntary pre-K-4. 4,000 students, and we say we want to close the opportunity gap. We all do, but a proven way of doing that is providing high-quality services, especially for the kiddos that need that extra help so they're ready for K, et cetera. This will provide it. The four, and this was a high priority by Governor Walls, by the House Democrats, and it's in here. And we're so thankful. It's just for two years, we'll be back to fight for more, but it's in here. And we all agree, and that's a good thing. 
and a bipartisan provision. And I want to thank Senator Abler for the, being chief author for the Teachers of Color, American Indian teachers that we need to increase bipartisan support. And thank you for asking me, and especially thank you for asking Senator Kunish, who championed this as a House member. And for those of us that have been here a while, let's think about Senator Torres Ray, who's carried this for several years and has said we need to do this. And now in a bipartisan way, it's gonna happen. It's overdue, but it's gonna happen and the results will come in bit by bit as we recruit students in high school, encourage them as we provide paths for persons and grow your own program hiring bonuses, et cetera. It's exciting, it's transformational, bipartisan support, so let's all be proud that it came together and that it's funded. And other initiatives related to our common objective on closing the achievement gap for the Sine Foundation. Tony Sine, what a wonderful person who's dedicated uh, after being an international soccer star to being a leading a foundation committed to helping students with programs to provide hope, opportunity to graduate. And three million, I believe, was included in a bipartisan way. Uh, that is great news. This is gonna help a lot of students. Several other items with bipartisan support. The cross-subsidy in special education, $10 million, that's important. Every school board member will tell you about that. The English language learners, two million a year to help address that in the cross-subsidy. And the letters program, yes, let's do that. It's evidence-based science-based, and if that is going to help teachers, we're all for it, because we need to lift up that key indicator at third grade on reading proficiency. And if you're at risk there, it really puts you at risk for graduating and further complications in life. So third grade reading, and if it gets into the letters program and it's going to help, that's great. Mental health, pre-COVID, was a big issue in our state. It still is. And we appreciate the focus, in part, on the bill for digital wellness and the Live More, Screen Less program. I look forward to their development of programs, developing a hub of resources, of involving students. Senator Swidinski's initiative that Senator Chamberlain mentioned as well. It, ties in. The Girls in Action program, and I think uh, Senator Champion for uh, an advocate, uh, advocating it and for it being included. I believe this program, which will now be available to many girls in the area, uh, but it started actually at uh, North High several years ago. And to provide role modeling, mentoring, and uh, a path of hope for girls and it's proven, and here's additional money. These are good things, these help close that opportunity gap. There's other items. Uh, one that I, I wanna to mention too is the inclusionary, uh, non-exclusionary discipline training. We need students to stay in school, and if there's been some uh, issues regarding uh, behavior not up to code, uh, we need to develop better strategies in addressing it. There's a million or so dollars. That's very important uh, for this type of training. We advocated, and it was $50,000 a year for the Bloomington Museum. It didn't make it before, but it did this time. All museums serve a very important educational role. And uh, thank you, Senator Rosen, earlier for including the Mankato, but Bloomington, the Grand Rapids, all museums are important, and we had argued for it. Some policies with a bipartisan support, the 
prohibition on meal shaming. Uh, it's, been, it's taken a while to get this done. Uh, thank you, Senator Housley, for carrying the bill this year, getting it to the finish line. Uh, Senator Kent, for your efforts for many years. Former Senator Alice Johnson, and many of these, it's taken a while. Let's remember how it actually got to where it's on the cusp of becoming law, but prohibiting meal shaming it needs to be enacted, and it will be. The religious observance of holiday, a policy notice, and uh, I guess we could call this a friendly uh, mandate, uh, but this was one of Senator Fate's first initiatives, and it's included. In fact, I think it's the first thing when you look at the bill that you'll see. And uh, I thought that during the hearing, uh, how uh, good, interesting it was when uh, one of the first testifiers was Senator Chamberlain's uh, a pastor at one of his churches, but it was a good connection and bipartisan support. The limits on screen time has been mentioned, and thank you, Senator Swedensky for pointing out the importance of putting some rest further restrictions. And how many of us are looking at screens now, always, and then we might wonder <laughs> about younger kids, so you know, maybe we can role model that better, too. And I also I want to thank Senator Chamberlain for including a bipartisan provision which provides a notice to parents, staff, and students if there's an environmental hazard that's been cited at a school. And the background on this related to water gremlin in our districts, Senator Chamberlain, Senator Isaacson, and myself. And now this will become a statewide uh, requirement in terms of notice. Uh, there are provisions that didn't make it. That's the case for all omnibus bills. There were ones that uh, we are pleased that didn't make it. And I'll just announce that the voucher proposal, and some may not refer to it, but we did not advocate for the education savings account because it could, according to nonpartisan research, take out $250 million by 2025 at funds that could go for education. We joined the state's largest parent organization, the Minnesota PTA, and their 200 plus chapters in opposing we must fully fund our schools and not siphon money that's going to hurt their ability to accomplish the objectives that we've set. We objected to delaying the rulemaking process for social study standards. This was not included the, as passed earlier, and we're pleased with that. The rulemaking will continue. And be assured, the teaching, the importance, and never forgetting the Holocaust will continue to be a part of what students learn in history, among other things. But this rule-making process will continue. We opposed last time the discrimination against transgender girls in athletics. This was not included. Of course, there were items that uh, we had advocated that didn't make it, and there, that's always going to be the case. I'll just mention a couple that we will continue to work on. The need for full service community schools, proven that you close the achievement gap when you provide wraparound services for students and families at an early age, they're ready for K when you can do that. How much easier will it be for a teacher and staff, support staff team, if a student is ready for school that day with a not all the other potential issues that need to be addressed? Full service community schools will continue to advocate that. And additional funds in the early education partnerships. We, there is funding for the great program for NAS uh, in North, Northeast Minneapolis, for the Promise program in St. Paul, 
the uh, programs and early education partnerships and St. Cloud, which Sandra Putnam told us about, but also Northfield and Red Wing and Austin and May this continue, the funds. I believe they have to apply for grants for about a half a million dollars, but this makes a difference, these early education programs. And so when we talk about what works, this works, and there's bipartisan support, but again, it takes resources to do it. Okay, $21 billion, and uh, it'll, Start going out before too long in increments to schools, charter schools, others, actually non public, get some of that too through uh, non religious type services. And the challenge for us now is to listen. When people ask, what, What's your job? and I focus, I just say four things listen, look, learn and lead. And that's what we need to do in all aspects of our work board. But for those of us passionate on education, visit your schools, thank the teachers, thank the support staff who have gone through incredible sacrifices, the backbone of that team. And I believe the tax bill is going to have some good news as to uh, the role that the uh, support, educational support personnel have provided for some additional funding. But we need to get out and listen. I, we talked about mandates and that we should avoid mandates. You know, there are mandates in here. And I support them. You know what many of them relate to? Special education. And some 13, 14 or so percent of Minnesota's nearly, uh, will round it, one million students. But the parents are advocates, and they do have some mandates regarding reports and intervention. In the past, too, we've talked about mandates related to dyslexia, which you have championed. Senator Chamberlain, and we, and I've supported, I support those efforts that parents have asked for. Uh, there was a mandate that Senator Coleman had that I supported regarding our world's best workforce and looking at the ninth grade, the critical time in ninth grade, and in terms of the information as to whether a student could be very high at risk of not graduating. And if we don't uh, intervene, and we asked for more information there, but it didn't make it. But uh, there are mandates that parents ask. And remember, when we approve $21 billion, you know, we aren't a benevolent foundation, we ask for results. It's part of our duty. So I hope we continue to reach out to the schools. I hope we can have some interim hearings, not next month, but thereafter. And maybe we can do some joint things with other committees, like with Senator Abler's committee. The omnibus bill that we addressed that Senator Benson, Senator Abler, Hoffman you know, presented had a number of things on child care and addressing the achievement gap, high quality early ed programs, and the nexus, the intersection is clear. So, and I want, I re remember how passionate Senator Ralph was on this issue and the early education and working on this. So, I would invite that, and I'm quite sure Senator Wickland, and we could work with our colleagues in the House as well. That's good, because it's been a long time since we've had an interim type hearing, and the challenges are there. So that's a challenge, and I want to remind everyone again, when you worked so hard and then took the oath of office to uphold the Constitution, 
we have Article 13, Section 1. And it's a duty for a uniform system of public schools for us to establish a general and uniform system and then provisions regarding the funding. We aren't there yet. It's in the Constitution. And so let's continue to have those discussions. And going back to Governor Walls, I know there was some criticism by uh, Republicans as to how much money was being recommended, but they seem pretty, pretty happy now about the amount of money in the formula, but there's a, pro a proposal, a transformational proposal called Do North, and every child getting equal education with equity regardless of zip code. There's a number of strategies. There's also been a study on school funding with a great deal of participation. And this should not gather dust, it should gather momentum. That is our charge. Members, it's our duty. We need to do it. It's in our state's best interest. Students are our future. Vote green. Thank you.